Hey guys, Mr. Slynn here with another video talking about how to avoid tilting, especially when you're playing a game like Team Fortress 2. If you guys are a competitive player like I am, you might be prone to tilting, which means that you get upset when you lose, when things don't go the way you planned. How do you avoid doing that? And how do you make yourself more constructive so that you can avoid tilting in the future? A uh, little bit of story time. When I first started playing competitively, I was a mad rager. Like, I could not stop, I could not help myself from yelling at myself, yelling at my teammates. I would just get really upset when things didn't go my way. And for some reason, and I don't know if this ever happens to you guys, but for some reason, whenever things didn't go correctly, like whenever things didn't go the way that I planned in my mind, it was never my fault. Like, I did what I was going to do in my mind. It's just that my teammates didn't do the right thing. Like, my teammates were not in the right place at the right time. Or, uh, you know, maybe an enemy just came unexpectedly around a corner and I was like, why, was, why is he there? Like, this doesn't make any sense. And it was always a sort of external circumstance as to why uh, I messed, uh, you know, the, the things didn't go my way. Um, and so I don't know if you guys have ever, ever had that kind of situation happen to you. Or maybe you instead just get frustrated uh, when you're playing the game. Like maybe when you're playing, uh, you're trying to get a kill and uh, you, you're just missing. You're just constantly missing. And you're like, man, I, I was hitting all these shots yesterday. Like I, I know I know how to hit these shots. Like, I've practiced this shot a million times. I can't believe that I missed that. I'm just so mad right now. Um, <laughs> those are just a couple different scenarios where people might tilt, where you or I might tilt. So how do you avoid that? Like, what, what do you have to do to avoid that happening in the future? Um, there's a lot to unpack here, but I'm, I'm personally a very logical person. So the way that I handle tilting might not be the way that you handle it. There's kinds of two kinds of people out there. There's... Uh, the, the, the people who are more logical, the people who are more like emotional. And I'm definitely not a very emotional person uh, in that sense. I've, I think through things uh, in a logical way. So the way that I handle it might not be the way you handle it. But here's how I think about it. Uh, I, I kind of think to myself, nobody's perfect. That's how I start. I start by saying, nobody's perfect. We're all human. Uh, and when you're human, when, when nobody's perfect, there's going to be mistakes. Mistakes... Uh, are a natural part of just living life, of just playing the game, of being a, com a competitor. Uh, you have to understand that even if you were hypothetically the best player in the world at this exact moment in time, you're still prone to making mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. Nobody is immune from mistakes. Mistakes are going to happen. So rather than put yourself in a mindset and having this expectation of everything is going to go perfectly, everything is going to go the way that I planned, I prefer to have a mindset of, okay, you know something is going to break somewhere. You know that someone is going to make a mistake somewhere at some point in time. Either I'm going to make a mistake or one of my teammates is going to make a mistake. That is going to happen. You just have to accept that. And so once you've accepted that mistakes are going to happen, it really has to do with how you react to that mistake. Like how you handle that, what's your attitude, and what's your mindset going into that mistake. And for a lot of people... I mean, no one likes making mistakes. Like, no, no one likes it when things go wrong, when things don't go the way you planned. Uh, but a lot of people, they, what that happens is that the mistake happens and they just get really frustrated. Um, when, when I first started playing TF2, I used to play on this really crappy Dell computer. It was like a home family computer that we all shared. I'm sure many of you guys have been in a similar situation or, or know that kind of feeling. And so it was just this really crappy computer that couldn't play TF2 very well. I was getting like 20 frames per second, trying to play soldier, trying to rocket jump around the map. Virtually impossible. So I always played spy. And sometimes when I was playing, my computer would randomly blue screen and just like, that was it. It would just blue screen, it would just turn off, shut down. I might be in the middle of a play, I might be in the middle of trying to get a kill or something, and it would just completely turn off and I couldn't do anything about that. And I would get like so, so mad, like so furious. And when you think about it, it's completely out of your control. You know what I'm saying? Like there's nothing that I really could do. Like I, I'm not, there, there might be something I could do to fix my computer from blue screening, but I didn't know how to fix it at the time. I didn't understand computers. And maybe it just had a hot room and like my computer just overheated and I couldn't really afford to get like a, a ni really nice computer. My parents wouldn't give me the money to do that. You know, they hated me playing video games or whatever. So, you know, there was just no way I was going to be able to do anything about that. But 
I just got pissed. And you can't, I just, like over time, the more I blue screen, the more pissed I would get. And I, I hit a certain point where I realized that I actually can't do anything about this anymore. So there's no point in me getting upset. You know what I'm saying? Like what's done is done. The computer blue screened. Let's move on from that, right? Let's just think about something else. Let's, let's just try and be more productive with my thoughts and my feelings. And again, that's a very like logical way to think about it because a lot of people like you just can't control your emotions. Your emotions are the way you are. You know, it's just like how you feel at that moment in time. I'm just pissed. Like that's just how I am right now. But just think of, if you just like step back for a second, and you think about it and you're just like, you know what? I can't control my, my computer blue screening. I can't control someone else making a mistake here and there. It's going to happen. You know, like I can't control if I call for let's make a play and go choke and someone else is on the other side of the map, you know, it's going to take them a long time to get to choke. So that's just, that play's just not going to happen. You know, that some things are just out of your control. You just need to work with what you've got instead. And so that's, that's kind of the first part that I have in, in my mind when I, when I'm trying to handle tilting. The second part is that you also have to understand that making mistakes is part of learning. No one, when they first pick up a skill, uh, let's say I'm trying to learn how to play guitar. Like when you first start learning how to play guitar, you're not gonna just start like jamming it out and suddenly be a guitar hero, you know? You're not gonna be a guitar master the first second you pick up a guitar. No, you're going to noodle around. You're going to like learn how to play chords very slowly and your hands are gonna slowly move into the positions that you need them to. You're gonna be looking at the, the sheet, trying to figure out how, how to put your hand in the right position. You're just gonna suck. <laughs> That's the point I'm trying to make. You're gonna be awful when you first start playing guitar. When you first start playing TF2, you're gonna be bad. That's just how things are gonna be. and. The truth is that like with most skills, there's usually someone in the world who's like way better at it than you are, especially with a game like TF2 that has been out for, you know, eight years now. Uh, but even if you were to play a brand new game, let's say Overwatch released tomorrow and everyone's playing Overwatch for the very first time, there's still probably someone in the world who's better than you at Overwatch the second that the game releases, just because they've may they maybe have 10 years of FPS experience more than you do. It's no secret that a lot of the top Overwatch players are TF2 players, uh, TF2 pros, and that's because they've had so much TF2 experience. I think the TF2 experience might be more applicable than someone who's played, I don't know, a different game like uh, Counter-Strike. You might not necessarily know how to rocket jump or do those kinds of things that might help you out in a game like Overwatch. And... So you kind of just have to accept that you're going to suck when you first start doing something. And that, that is another contributing factor towards the mistakes, right? And so as you can see here with my first two layers, I'm kind of creating this mindset. I'm creating this sort of expectation that things are not going to go perfectly. And so I think that's where a lot of people start uh, being upset, where they start tilting, is because they have this expectation that things are going to go really, really well the way that you imagined it in your mind. And so when you think about these two layers, you, you kind of realize actually things are more than likely not gonna go the way that I plan. It's more than likely that things are not gonna go perfectly. In fact, it's virtually impossible for things to go the way I planned, exactly the way that I planned it in my mind. And once you get to that point where you sort of set the expectation that mistakes are gonna be made, that things are gonna go wrong, then, you kind of go, okay, you know, this is fine. Like, this is exactly what was supposed to happen. Like, stuff, something was going to go wrong that I had not thought of. And then you could take it one step further, further and say, not only did a mistake happen, but this is a good thing. Like, the fact that I've made a mistake, the fact that I've found a breaking point in my plan helps me understand in the future that this breaking point is probably going to happen again. Um, so, for example, if I... Just, I have in my mind, like in my mind, I think that I can beat an Uber with no Uber. Like if I have no Uber and the other team has Uber, for some reason, I think that maybe I could beat them. Maybe I could like wrap around them or force the Uber and, and kite it away or do some kind of play like that. And I keep trying that over and over again. And, and maybe the first time I try that, they just Uber into me and kill everything. I kind of realized, oh, wait a second. That's something I might not have considered. Maybe they can be invincible for eight seconds and then totally destroy my team during that, during that period in time. And then you kind of just say like, you need to, every time you make a mistake, you need to sort of learn from that mistake, right? If you just keep making the same mistakes over and over again, that's the definition of insanity, right? You just keep thinking that you're going to do the same thing over and over again and expect a different result. So you, you, you try it again, maybe. And you say, okay, I'm going to try the same play again where I have no Uber and they have Uber and we're just going to try and make that work. 
after about like 20 times where you keep trying that and their team keeps Uber, their team keeps Ubering and destroying your team, you kind of need to wake up and realize that, hey, maybe having Uber is actually pretty important. Maybe having Uber is stronger than having no Uber. And then you kind of realize, okay, that is something that I need to understand and then sort of work around now. And so that's why every mistake that you make gets you that much closer to finding the solution that you need. Maybe the solution isn't, okay, I'm gonna find a way to beat their non their Uber with no Uber. Maybe you come to the realization, and this is just a hypothesis, the scientific method, right? Maybe you just come to the realization that, okay, maybe when they have Uber, I'm probably going to lose that next team fight. Let's instead kite and run away from that Uber until we get our own Uber and then try and fight Uber versus Uber. Maybe that will give us a higher probability. Maybe that will give us a better chance of winning. So. Again, like the way that I approach tilting, it might not work for everybody, but I, I really truly believe that like tilting has to do with expectations. So if you could just set the expectations very early on that yes, you're not perfect, and yes, you're going to make mistakes, and yes, those mistakes will contribute to you getting better as a player, and I just need to make mistakes in order to find the holes in my gameplay, in order to find the places where I need to improve, I think that is a, is a significant win right there. If you can just get to that point as a player, that will be so important for you. Something that I probably should have put at the beginning of this video, but I'm kind of saving for the end now, is that when you are a competitive player, when you're a competitor, whether you're playing TF2 or any other sport or eSport, there's two parts to your gameplay. There is... Your raw, your raw technical skill is your ability to actually play the game that you're supposed to be playing. And then there's your sort of mental fortitude, your attitude, the way you, th you think about the game. And so much of being a good player actually comes down to your attitude. It actually comes down to how you, especially in a team game, like how you uh, gel with your teammates, how you, your chemistry there, like what you do will affect everyone else that you play with. And you kind of have to realize that like having a bad attitude will actually make you a worse player. It'll make you a worse player and it'll make you a worse teammate. Like, you can't possibly expect that after you start tilting, you're gonna start playing better. I think uh, in some situations that might be the case, whereas like, like if you're a baseball player, you just get pissed and suddenly you just swing harder than ever before and you hit more home runs than ever before. Or let's say you're a fighter or you're a boxer and you just get, you get beat down, you get pissed and you suddenly just start wailing at the other guy. Like, okay, maybe there might be a situation where you get really, really angry or really, really tilted and suddenly you start playing better. But the majority of the time, it's really not about that. It's more about like control. I think that is the mark of a truly great player is someone who is controlled the entire time. Someone who has a complete grasp of not only themselves, but their surroundings and like everything that, that, is, that could possibly be affecting them. They just control everything and that's what allows them to win. I think that is way stronger than someone who doesn't have that control, who's someone who just has to be like a wild animal in order to win, you know what I'm saying? So I really do feel like you could have as much raw talent as possible, but if you have a terrible attitude, that's going to hold you back as a player, that's gonna hold you back as a competitor. And using some of these tools to avoid tilting is like one of the best things you could possibly do for yourself. So there's a ton of stuff you can find online. If this video didn't really help you out, go do some research into like sports psychology and into like uh, just like your mindset. And you know, hopefully that, that will help you with the tilting. But I, I really do feel like for me personally, this is what works as sort of just, you know, accepting the fact that things are not gonna go my way. And then you have to also like, have a growth mindset and sort of log that in your brain. And uh, every time you make a mistake, you can't just ignore the mistake or pretend like it never happened. You have to accept that like the mistake actually happened and it potentially is more than likely your fault or there's something you could have done to prevent that mistake from happening and then try and fix that for the future. So uh, when, when you do Uber, into, when you do play into an Uber and you have no Uber, you kind of have to realize that, okay, maybe that might be the place, maybe that might be the reason why things are going my way. Maybe it's not that I didn't hit the right shot. Maybe it's not that my players were not in the right place. Maybe it's just that in general, no Uber is gonna lose to Uber. So there's different ways to break that down, but you just need to keep like hypothesizing, keep trying to find how to overcome that barrier. And then hopefully you'll see the improvement. So I hope this video helps you guys out. If you liked it, don't forget to thumbs up. 
and put something in the comments if you guys want to give me feedback for my next video. And I look forward to seeing you on that one. Take care.